Well, dengue numbers are up nearly 50% from three weeks before, with about 200 cases reported last week. Right now, there are 38 active clusters. The largest is in Boon Lay Place, with about 60 down with the virus. I Meanwhile, well, researchers are working to fine-tune a method that, they, that can help them determine who is likely to get severe dengue and then need hospitalization. It's based on identifying two compounds in your blood. For more, we're joined by Dr. Andrew Tu. He's uh, from the NTU's Lee Kong Chen School of Medicine and Assistant Professor Chia Poing, consultant at NCID and Tan Tok Sing Hospital. Thanks both of you for joining us this evening. I'll start with you, Dr. Tio. Now, the two compounds, uh, they are two blood proteins, and let me try to pronounce them, SST2 and SUPA. Now, the levels of which are supposed to tell us when we are more likely to be seeing a severe case of dengue. How true is that? All right, so uh, just to give a brief introduction. So, um, as we, our body experience an infection, in this case, dengue virus infection, our body will release uh, chemical signals as part of the host defense against an invading pathogen. So SUPA and SST2 are two of such uh, signals. So what we actually observe is that people with severe dengue, they tend to have higher levels of uh, both proteins compared to those with mild disease. And what we actually observe is also that these two proteins are actually much higher in the early phase of the disease before the patients actually progress and develop a severe dengue. Therefore, they actually have a good potential uh, to be useful to detect or to determine those who are at risk of severe dengue during the early disease phase. Right. Uh, pr Professor Paul, uh, uh, Professor Chia, pardon me. Uh, now, these two compounds that we see, as Dr. Chiu just mentioned, we can actually use them for predictive purposes because we see them in early phases of dengue as well. Now, it's being carried out for heart patients. Do we then, by default, carry this out for all patients who have dengue in the early stages of their contracting and being diagnosed as having dengue? Yes, uh, thanks for the question. So in short, I would say that we are looking for similar but not exactly the same results or cutoffs in dengue patients compared to heart patients. So we have evaluated these tests in our own local study of dengue patients and have shown that the cutoffs are 35 nanograms per mil for SST2 and 5.4 nanograms per mil for SUPAR. Now, 35 nanograms per mil is also the US FDA approved cutoff uh, value for heart failure. And for SUPAR, that has in other studies looking for its use in other disease. And their cutoff is about a, a bit of a range, four to six nanograms per mil. And this is remarkably close to what we have found for dengue. So what we hope is that we can use these tests to help us predict in early disease after they have been diagnosed with dengue, who or who will not have uh, severe dengue. Dr. Chiu, you're looking at adapting the kit for heart patients uh, for, for dengue patients. How far are you now in that process, though? So, um, thanks for the question. So, we first have to understand that uh, how we diagnose or how physicians or clinicians identify those at risk of severe dengue. So, tra traditional methods is through um, clinical observation or and laboratory testings. So these two tests are usually will have a long turnaround time, about 24 to 48 hours. Whereas for the test that we are proposing, uh, it will take approximately 10 to 15 minutes. So the turnaround time is actually quite fast. And in terms of accuracy, it's also much, um, at present, much more reliable than what uh, the current, through the uh, current traditional methods. So for the timeline wise, we have to further validate our studies and through validation in the um, young children cohort, in the young adults and also the elderly, and then further put it out on a clinical trial before um, being hopeful that these are then be able to supplement or to be used in the primary care setting. So a time frame of around, say, five years. All right. So outcomes for patients are, are what will be in focus here. So, Professor Chia, looking at test results on dengue patients, how is that going to help doctors in the work that they do? 
Okay. So, uh, so we hope that these results can actually help doctors at two levels. One is to better monitor dengue patients in the outpatient setting, and the second is to help to guide the need for admission. So like what uh, Dr. Andrew Thiel mentioned earlier, we currently use certain symptoms and findings picked up when the doctor checks a patient, which we collectively call dengue warning signs, to determine if the patient can be managed in the outpatient setting or if they require admission instead. However, a local study has actually shown that majority of the time, the onset of warning signs to severe disease can be rather short, either on the day itself or only one day prior, which results in a need for daily reviews. So the uh, predictive uh, ability of these dengue warning signs Yes. Oh, pardon me for cutting in. Uh, I just wanted to ask you because you're saying you differentiate between outpatient treatment and patient that who require admission. But of course, these two uh, proteins, these compounds in the blood, they can also suggest different things. So, for example, SSD5, one points to heart stress, the other one points to greater inflammation. So these tests, these compounds can also help you differentiate between the types of treatment in principle that you give to each different patient. Or is that uh, too fine-tuned for now in terms of progress? I think it's too fine-tuned now in terms of progress, but definitely in the future, if there should be effective antivirals for dengue uh, that's available, these tests can also help to stratify who are at risk of severe disease and who will benefit from taking these antivirals versus those who would have mild disease anyway and would not require these antivirals. So that is definitely something that can change in the future. Dr. Chiu, and if I may then just... Yeah. Professor Chia, just continue. continue about yeah. yes, about the fact that we can help at two settings. So in the outpatient setting, maybe we can actually reduce the number of outpatient visits required for the doctors, as well as the number of uh, admissions required by predicting who actually needs admission and who can actually recover well at home. Dr. Chiu, uh, a quick final question for you. Dengue is, of course, endemic across the world. This is a Singapore study. Is there a chance that it might be adapted for other regions, other countries that have dengue cases and high levels of them? Yes, yeah, so um, as we know, dengue is an endemic in Singapore and also in, uh, in the region. So our region would refer to countries like Malaysia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand. So what we actually are uh, um, hoping for is that um, to have a test kit that is fast and reliable compared to the traditional methods. And then um, these tests are then be able to be implemented in um, various settings, such as in the primary care, polyclinics, GP, and also in resource limited settings. So the ideal goal is actually to have a kit that is able to provide um, results quickly, accurately, and then in this case, we can preserve uh, health care to those who actually need them most. Well, thank you both for sharing your perspectives on this research and all the best with your future work on it as well. Dr. Andrew Tio there from NTU's Li Kong Chen School of Medicine and Assistant Professor Chia Poying, consultant at NCID and Department of Infectious Diseases, Tantok Singh Hospital.